About a year and a half ago, I uploaded my last YouTube video, and a lot's happened. I snuck into the Super Bowl, got lost outside of Volcano in Hawaii, and even fell in love with a Dominican woman in Cuba. Figure that one out. Though none of that actually happened last year, there's still some of my favorite memories. And that's why this year, I want to create some more of my favorite memories with you. I'll tell you how I actually snuck into the Super Bowl in 2007, but first I gotta tell you where I've been and where we're going. Originally I stopped making YouTube videos because my laptop broke and I couldn't get a replacement. And about that time I had recently graduated from college and gotten my first job after. It was actually a pretty sweet gig. I was kind of in charge of running this new product launch for the company, almost like running a startup. And then shortly after I joined an actual local startup where I was running their social media and built computers for them. So the computer I built for myself is actually really kick ass. But the big news that I'm really excited to share with you guys is I joined a new esports org, brand new, called Monarch. And we're gonna have a big announcement and everything within the next month or so. I'm the first content creator. I'm gonna be doing recruiting for them as well. And I can't tell you how stoked I am for this. But what that means for you and for me is that this year I wanna build a community where you feel like you're part of a team, part of a family, somewhere where you belong. And I wanna get back to you guys. Whether I'm doing cash and product giveaways, whether we're doing charity streams, or whether we're just doing like a sub hotline every so often where I get to talk to you guys one on one as homies. We'll be back streaming and with videos for Fortnite, League of Legends, Apex, Teamfight Tactics, just a little bit of variety. I'm not sure if I'll be doing that here on YouTube live streaming or if I'll be doing it on twitch.tv slash direct, but go ahead, drop me a follow over there. And I'm also looking to hire a video and thumbnail editor, which I would love to have be one of you. You can fill out the Google form below to apply. But this year, I wanted to be about all of us together, and I'm excited to have each of you be a part of it. Now, for the Super Bowl, let me, let me set the scene for you. It all started 14 years ago in downtown Miami. I was 12 years old, tagging along with my dad at the time, who, who was doing some financial advising for NFL players. And one of his clients was actually an NFL agent who invited us to this Super Bowl party, this mega banger, dude. I was a little young to be drinking, so there wasn't much for me to be doing other than just hugging the wall as this scrawny starstruck kid in a room full of giants. But an angel shined down on me, and her name was Mama Foster. Now, Mama Foster was running back to Sean Foster's mom. Every player in the league knew her, and when she spoke, you obeyed. I never suffered from her wrath, but I did suffer from her kindness as she grabbed me by the arm and led me around this, this party, ordering every single one of these drunk NFL players to sign my football. For the next week after though, my dad and I asked around trying to find some cheap tickets, which were completely sold out and were not cheap. Scalpers were selling them for five, 10, even like I heard $15,000. Absurd, dude. And on top of that, half of them were fake. My dad and I were fortunate enough at the hotel we were staying at where we ran into this officer who's running security for the Super Bowl, and he told us what to look for in the fake tickets and the real ones. Most of the fakes would look legit, but they would kind of just be a Google printout, like a photocopy even, and they would just be printed on top of like this foam and cardboard type material where the genuine tickets would have this like raised bevel of the Lombardi trophy, and they would also have a hologram when you tilted the ticket. Equipped with that information, we spent all this time looking for tickets, couldn't find anything. And the day the Super Bowl comes out, we are in a Walmart parking lot for some reason. We finally found this dude willing to sell what looked like two legit tickets for two grand for the both of them, which still crazy, but it was a good deal. And right as my dad is about to hand over the cash and this guy's gonna hand over the tickets, this maniac in a leather jacket comes busting up to us, screaming at us, and he's like, hey, is that guy selling you tickets? He just ripped me off for 10 grand for fakes. As we turn to look at this guy warning us, then look back at the guy selling us the tickets, he's already halfway across the parking lot booking it with this maniac in hot pursuit. So all my dad and I can do is look at each other. I'm sad, I'm 12, I'm teary-eyed. It felt like we came all this way from nothing but disappointment. And my dad being the good guy he is, he takes me to Walmart. He buys me like a pound of Sour Patch Kids, favorite candy at the time, soda, chips, the whole thing. We go in the rental van and we start watching the game on like a battery operated TV. In typical Miami, Florida fashion, a monsoon is just raining hell upon us and the stadium. Everyone, people are pouring out, <laughs> pouring, people are pouring out of the stadium and there's no re-entry. So they paid all this money and they're just don't want to watch the game anymore. So 
My dad and I get this idea. We went up to the gate and started asking a bunch of people for their ticket stubs, and eventually, with enough persistence, a couple fans gave us their stubs. So we took those stubs as proof that we had been in the Super Bowl at some point, even though there's no re-entry, and we go talk to the security officer on the side. My dad makes a very compelling argument by pointing over at me, this little 12-year-old, with my big blue puppy dog eyes, and he's just telling me how unfair it all is, and think of the children. And after 15 minutes of holding this poor man hostage in our negotiation, well, guys, his big heart just couldn't take it any longer. And he was just, quite frankly, sick of looking at us. So he lifts up the chains and he whispers, you know what? Go ahead. And with those magic words, I bolted down 50 yard line field level to watch my dad's hometown bears get absolutely annihilated by the Colts and Peyton Manning, who I cheered for, which I still feel bad for. But at the end of the day, dude, my dad was just happy that well, we accomplished this. I was having the time of my life. I was so stoked that we, able to, we were able to do it as well. And we were just happy that we got to pull it off somehow. So if you take anything away from that story, it's that confidence and tears will get you in a lot of cool places with cool people. I don't know if all of us will be able to sneak into a Super Bowl together, but I do know that together we can create some pretty cool memories this year. I've been streaming over at twitch.tv slash direct if you want to come hang out with everyone while I get the YouTube up and running again. But either way, I am absolutely stoked for what we're going to have going this year. So thank you for watching, welcome back, and I will see you in the next video.